Hello, uh, this is Mr. Henry, and welcome to lesson 6.4. Uh, in this lesson, we will be comparing functions. Center question says, how do I compare functions? Uh, so down below, the did you know says, uh, did you know that oftentimes you can use features of functions to compare them? Now, the features we're usually going to look at, especially with linear functions, would be the initial value and the rate of change. Uh, we've seen in the past that those words have a different meaning when you're talking about a line. So typically the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b, where the rate of change is your slope, and the initial value is the y-intercept. So the two things we can compare about functions, linear functions, are the two features of a line, the slope and the intercept. Now, in functions, usually they're word problems, and so they're, the meanings are slightly different, but it's, that's basically what it is. It's the slope and the y-intercept. It's the rate of change and the initial value. So some possible examples like, well, who starts with more money? Who makes more money per hour? Who would have more money in eight hours? Those are all scenarios of things that you can find by looking at the rate of change, slope, and the initial value, y-intercept from functions. There is no new vocabulary in this lesson, so let's get on with it. So example one here says, uh, both relations represent linear functions. Okay, cool. Which function has a greater rate of change? So we are looking for which one, just A or B, has the bigger rate of change. And I said just a second ago that rate of change is slope. So if I can find the slope of these two functions, that will tell me which one has the bigger rate of change. Okay? Well, function B is pretty easy because this is already in slope intercept form, where this guy is your slope. So the slope here is negative 2. That is the rate of change for function B. I go to function A, and I find my slope. Now, from a table or a set of points, we have this formula that we learned back a little bit, uh, chapter 4, I believe it was. That was, uh, not that. It was m equals y2 minus y1 over x. 2 minus x1. That is the slope formula. It is the formula you use to find slope, and that's what we're doing. Now, from my table up here, I can pick any two points. I pick an x, y point. See, there's one. This is be like x and y. And pick another one. It doesn't matter which one you pick. They're all going to give you the same slope because it's linear. So I'm just going to pick this guy. So when I plug them in, I'm going to say this is my x1. It's the x value of the first point. y1, x2, y2. These are my second point, so I'm using uh, the 2 subscript. Now when I plug in y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And I do the math. Let's see, 15 minus 9 is 6, 5 minus 2 is 3, and I simplify, and I get a slope of 2. So function A has a slope of positive 2, function B has a slope of negative 2. Which function has the greater slope, the greater rate of change? Well, I would say this guy, because positive 2 is bigger than negative 2, so I would say my answer is function A. I found the slope, which is rate of change. I found the slope, which is rate of change. I compared the slopes. Function A had the bigger one. Letter B. Luke graphed the function shown. So, there's Luke's graph. Leia wrote the function given by the equation. So, I'm going to write this down because it's probably going to be important. Y equals negative 2x plus 1. There's Leia's equation. Okay. 
which function has the greater y-intercept. Now they also, instead of saying y-intercept, they could have said initial value. That is another phrase that means the same thing as y-intercept. They could have said initial value. Okay, just make sure we understand the vocabulary that's going on here. So when I look at it, uh, Luke's function, Luke's y-intercept, it's where your line, this guy here, crosses the y-axis. Oh, that was terrible. So they are crisscrossing right here when the y-value is negative 1, negative 2. So Luke's y-intercept is negative 2. Leia's y-intercept, this is just understanding the formula, understanding slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. This is your slope. This is your y-intercept, which means Leia's y-intercept is positive 1. So which one's bigger? Luke's negative 2 or Leia's positive 1? Yeah, you're darn right. It's Leia's. because positive 1 is bigger than negative 2. If we were to graph this line for Miss Leia here, it would cross at positive 1, and then the slope would be something like this. Okay, that part's not as important. What it's asking about is this initial value, this y-intercept. Leia's is bigger than Luke's. Um... Uh, Example two. So now we're doing kind of more word problem E. It says, Morgan and Steve leave school at the same time. Both travel home at a constant speed. This constant speed. Speed is a rate. It is how fast something is happening. That rate we also sometimes call a slope. Just throwing some words out there. The table below shows the function that models Morgan's trip home. The graph shows the function that models Steve's trip home. Who got home first? Ooh. So here is Morgan. And here is Steve. So we want to know who got home first. And now, if we brainstorm this for a second. They're both traveling at a constant speed. That means they're just not slowing down and speeding up and slowing down and speeding up. And we're just trying to find out who got home first. Okay, so I actually want you to take a second. Look at the graph and the chart. You have them both on your note sheet side by side. See if you can make a guess at who got home first and see if you can figure out why. I'll give you like a couple seconds. Pause the video if you want a little bit more time. Are you ready to continue hit play? And we'll go through it together. Did you say that Steve got home first? It's true. Steve would get home first. Because if you look at Steve's graph here, at time zero, Steve starts three miles away from his home. Okay? As he's traveling, in two minutes, and three, and four, and five, and six, his distance from home is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. He's getting closer to home. Well, where does he actually get home? When is his distance from home zero? It happens at nine minutes. So it took Steve nine minutes to get home. How long did it take Morgan? Well... If we look at our chart, it's a little bit harder to understand. Now, I had uh, some students in the past who said, well, Mr. Henry, could we just take this chart and graph it over here? Can I do that? Can you let me unlock? I just need, I don't, I need to copy and paste it so I can see both things on the same screen. Here we go. Oh, it's somewhere. There it is. there. All right. So I had some folks who said, okay, well, let's let's take this Miss Morgan's information here. I'm going to do it in blue and graph it. So Morgan at 
x value 0, y value 4. So she starts further away, and then 3 minutes, she's at 2.8, which is like here. And at 10 minutes, she's at 0, which is here. And if we draw the line through our points, we can see that Steve would get home first. The time it took Morgan to get home was 10 minutes. When her distance away from home was 0, it took 10 minutes. Okay, So Steve took 9. Morgan took 10 minutes to get home. That means Steve got home first. Now, if you didn't graph this, if you're just looking at your table, you could use that same logic. Okay, so time spent traveling in zero minutes at the very beginning, Morgan was four miles from home. And you look, well, when was the distance from home for Morgan? Zero. When is she standing at her house? And the answer is, well, right here. That's 10 minutes later. So 10 minutes she's at home. For uh, Steve, 9 minutes he's at home. Okay? So this is a fairly easy lesson. It's just mostly looking at the charts and graphs and trying to recognize these features, these the slopes and the intercepts and whatnot. Carlos and Lily are each painting identical walls for their painting service. Carlos has painted 300 feet squared and plans on painting 150 feet squared per hour, I'm sorry, each hour, to finish his wall. Lily's plan is for painting can be represented by that equation, y equals 180x plus 200, where x is the number of hours and y is the total amount of wall painted. Who is painting their section of wall faster? Okay, question. Make sure you understand the question. Who is painting faster? faster. I'm looking for a speed. I'm looking for a rate. I'm looking for the slope. That's what I'm looking for. Who is painting faster? What is the rate of both of these people, the speed, the, the slope of both of these people? And then once I find their slopes, I just look at which slope is bigger. Okay, so I mean, Lily's is pretty easy. If I look at Lily's information, it gives me an equation. Y equals 180x plus 200. If you know about your slope-intercept form, <laughs> that means that this guy is your slope. So Lily's speed is 180-something. It's probably feet squared per hour. Is Y unit hours? Oh yeah, x, x is hours, y is total ball painted. So, Lily's speed is 180 feet squared per hour. That is her rate. Okay, that's how fast Lily is painting. Speed, rate, slope, slope. That's how I made the connection to what we're doing. Now, if we go to Carlos... Let's see what it says about Mr. Carlos here. It says, Carlos has painted 300 feet squared and plans on painting 150 feet squared each hour. Okay, so what is Carlos's speed? How fast is he painting? Well, he's painting 150 feet each hour. 150 feet squared each hour, or one hour. That is his speed. That is his slope. Kind of beyond the question, but if I was going to write Carlos's information in a an equation, it would look like this. That's his slope. And since he started with 300 feet already painted, that would be his initial value. So, if we looked at R2, his equation, her equation, his rate, her rate. Who is painting faster? Very clearly, Lily is painting faster. Her rate is 180 feet squared per hour. His rate is 150 feet squared per hour. Lily is painting faster. OK. 
Okay. Speed, rate, slope. Those things are all the same. Letter C. I think this is actually the last problem, too. Donald is comparing two cell phone plans that charge by month. Let X represent the number of minutes used over 500, and Y represent the total cost in dollars. The cost from AT&T is represented by the equation, and they give me an equation. The cost for Verizon is represented by the graph. Which plan charges more per minute over the 500 minutes that are included? Which plan charges more per minute? Dollars per minute. This, to me, looks like a slope. They're asking for what, which plan charges more per minute. What is their rate at which they charge you once the 500 minutes are done? Okay dollars per minute that is a ratio that is a rate so whose rate whose slope is bigger AT&T's or Verizon's well AT&T's is right there AT&T is y equals 0 0.35x plus 20 so this is their slope, which is the rate. So they charge 0 0.35 dollars per minute. That would be 35 cents per minute. Okay. What about Verizon? So I have their rate. Now I need to get Verizon's rate. Okay, so I'm looking at this. Hmm, how do I find a rate? Well, to find a rate, usually a slope, you look for where does your line go right through those intersection points. There's uh, one right here, and here, and here, and here, and here. So I pick two, any two. And I find my slope from it. I can use counting boxes. I can use my slope formula. I personally, well, we can try this a couple different ways. Let, let's try counting boxes. And if that doesn't look good to you, we'll try the other way. So uh, if I go, hmm, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick this point here and this point here. So up one over two. I want you to pause and think for a second. Why is it wrong? Not correct. Why is it wrong to say your slope is 1 over 2? This is wrong. This is bad. Why? Pause the video. Think for a couple seconds. You ready to continue? Hit play and we'll think about it together. Okay. The reason why this is wrong is because... Even though you went up one box, this is not up one dollar. Your units here is in dollars. One box here is actually up 2.5. I know that because two boxes make five, and half of five is two and a half. So, like zero, 2.5. Two and a half, five. Seven point five, ten. 12.5, 15, 17.5, 20, 22.5, 25. Each box is counting by two and a half. Think of like 25 cents. 25 cents, 50 cents, 75 cents, a dollar. A dollar 25, a dollar 50, dollar 75, two dollars. Okay? So when I go up one box, I'm going up 2.5 dollars over... How many minutes is this? Is this actually two minutes? Well, we went from the number two. Two units over takes us to the number four. So yes, yes, that is actually two minutes. Okay, so here is Verizon's rate. Now we want to compare these two. AT&T 0.35 and Verizon's 2.5 over two. 
Which one is bigger? Which one is smaller? How can we tell? Well, if you remember way back, way back in chapter zero, when we were talking about comparing numbers in different formats, usually the best thing to do is to change everything into decimals. Because it's usually pretty easy to change every number into a decimal. And decimals are pretty easy to compare themselves. So if we take, well, he's already a decimal. So he's just going to stay 0 0.35. This guy, when we divide it using a calculator, I'm going to take, come on, 2.5 divide 2 equals 1.25. So now I have both numbers as decimals. The question was, which plan charges more per minute over the 500 minutes that are included? Who charges more per minute, AT&T or Verizon? Very clearly, Verizon charges more per minute. And we know that because Verizon charges a dollar twenty-five per minute, AT&T charges thirty-five cents per minute. Now, before we get all up in arms, these are not real numbers; these are made-up numbers, just for an example. Okay, it's more likely the two companies are very, very close to the same. But for the sake of this example, Verizon charges a lot more per minute than AT&T. Okay, so we are looking at again a rate. A ratio, a speed, a slope. Summary. Summary question says, uh, when comparing two functions, what are some possible criteria to compare them? When you're comparing two, I guess we should say, linear functions, what are some things that we looked at when we were comparing them? This has been Lesson 6.4. Thank you for watching.